Okay, so what's your name? Kathy Dana. Okay. Where and where were you born? I was born in Southern California. It's called a little town called Loma Linda. What year? 1953. <laughs> Where did you grow up in Spokane? I grew up in Ontario, California, which is right nearby. It's in Southern California. And it's got, you know where LA is, right? It's east of LA. As a child, I was a student. As a grown-up, <laughs> as a grown-up, I am. Um, I do hypnotherapy like and massage. You hypnotize people? I hypnotize people Ooh, for all different kind of back. all different kinds of problems and different things that people want in their life. Can you hypnotize me to make me laugh? To make you laugh? Ooh, what do you want to laugh at? Anything. I just need a laugh. You need a laugh? Oh, that's a great one. I could probably you do that. Can you me if I stop laughing? <laughs> <laughs> the, the main criterion for if you need, to, if you can be hypnotized is if you, if there's something you want, I can do that. I can work with that. So, yes. Okay. So, how was it like in East L.A.? Um, it was... Southern California, so it was really hot in the summer, so maybe in the 90s, all summer, and when we were, I was maybe like eight, we got this, it's called a Dolboy pool, that you can go swimming in your backyard, and um, what did you ask me, what is it like there? In East okay. Yeah. So, in the summers it was really hot. We'd have to go down to the high school to the plunge and go swimming. When I got old enough, I, I got a car and my girlfriends and me would go down to Newport Beach and we would go swimming and all that kind of stuff. Um, I went to a big old high school, 3,200 kids at my high school. Big old high school. Oh. Is Bella ask her more questions? Well, do you want to know, like, if I have brothers and sisters and stuff like that? Would you uh, happy to share? I'm happy to share anything. So, good question. So, I had my my um, two younger brothers. One brother, so there's me, and then there's my brother a year, and then two years more, my other brother, so Greg and Paul. My dad, my dad had been in World War II, and he, during... When he was in high school, he was the captain of the gymnastics team. He liked to climb trees, and he was really active. But in World War II, he got shot in the leg, and so he, all the time I knew him, he had a stiff right leg. That meant he, he couldn't bend his leg, and so he became a school psychologist. Do you guys know what a school psychologist is? He's the one that he really advocated for the kids and worked with the different kids. So my dad was a school psychologist. My mom was, she had dropped out of, out of college to have us kids, but she went back to college and she went all the way through college, then a master's degree, then a PhD. So she was a professor of literature. She was an English professor. Why do you want to share your story? Oh, that's it. That's a hard question. Mm. <clears throat> I, well, what I wrote on there is that um, I used to belong to this, it was a women's group of storytelling. We would get together every Monday and we would tell stories out of our life. And I think that from stories you can really, um, you can learn a lot and you can, I mean, Think of it. Every movie, every TV show, what's behind it? A story. 
stories are like the the most mm, the basic part of anything of entertainment. There's a story in it. So I thought I have some good stories. Um, uh, is there anything else we should know about you? Anything else? There's just like, like, how long do you have? Ten years? I could tell you a lot of things. <laughs> what kind of things are you guys interested in? What do you like in school? Do you know about the point, Alameda Point? Tell me, no. Tell me about it. Oh, I thought you knew about it. Only hardly. She told me like this little teeny tiny little bit. I hardly know long, anything. How long have you about been living in Alameda? Oh, I moved to Alameda in 1985. Was it like how it is now? I'd say it's more crowded now. <laughs> I think the same thing the last got reported. Really? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Driving, the traffic's way more crowded. I think there's a people love the Bay Area. You guys don't know. You pro, have you traveled anywhere else? Like I have went to Sacramento. You went to Sacramento? Okay. So Sacramento's big though too. Have you guys ever gone to any other, other other states or countries? I went to um, Georgia, Florida, Myrtle Beach, and South Carolina. Cool. My grandmother lived in Florida, and I never went there. I've never gone through any of the southern states. But um, we had exchange students living at my house in the last. I have a son. He's 23 years old. He went to Alameda Community Learning Center. And when he was a junior in high ACLC? school, ACLC, mm -hmm. I, I teach at ACLC. Oh. So when he was a junior, we decided to have an exchange student from France, David. And so he came and we had him for six months. The next year we had Mark from Germany. And then after that we had, um, uh, I think the next we had, Emma from Sweden and Ava from Italy. Then we had Joe from China, Lawrence from Germany, and um, what's the other one? Um, Killian from Paris. And then finally we had Yegor, he's from Russia. We had him for two years. So we had all these exchange students. So one of the things that my husband and I did is we went to go visit them. We got to go stay with their family in Sweden, two in Germany, and one in France, the French Alps. And if you ever get a chance to travel, it's so fun. You see things you never expected to see. All kinds of things. It's and really you, fun. You was a youth last time. Um, where did you travel to? Ah, when I was your age, let me think. It was when I was in college that I first started traveling because I went, I was 20, and I went, there's something called the World Campus Afloat, where you do a semester at sea, and so you're on this ship. I was on a ship with 450 students and about 50 different teachers, and we went, it goes all different places in the world, but where we went, we went to Hawaii, Japan. Taiwan, Korea, Indonesia, Australia, Fiji, Tahiti. We went all over the Pacific. Are you texting? Oh. Play with my fingers. Oh, I play with your fingers. Because I'm a teacher. I'm trained to see when people look down. I'm like, what do you have there? What, do, what, kind, of, <laughs> what kind of thing are you playing with? Because in my classes, you have to focus. You can't use it. When anyway. you were in high school, what did you, like, did you, when you were in high school, did you like sports? I loved sports. Like, what sports did you like? Volleyball. I especially liked volleyball. But you know, when I went to high school, now, I don't know, do you guys have P.E. every day? Not, um, not at my school. Yeah, okay. What, what grade are you guys in? Ninth. I'm like first grade. She's in seventh grade. Okay. seventh grade? No, you're in sixth grade because you just graduated last well, year. Well, sixth grade, seventh. She's still next grade. We both high school. Which school do you guys go to? She go to Encinal. Um, 
I go right next to Ashwood. Oh, you're at Nia? Oh, cool. Ah, I just came from there. Cool. Well, and where are you from? Uh, what school? SNL. That's where my husband SNL. graduated. My husband grew up here. Jim, he grew up here and he went to Ensignal High. So, anyway, what sports? Um, when I went to high school, we had PE every day, and so every quarter it changed to a different sport. We got to play everything you could imagine, and I loved it. It was so fun. We play anything from gymnastics, badminton, um, softball, basketball, volleyball, swimming, golf, tennis, every kind of sport, and we would, you know, we would do things. But I was on the volleyball team for a while. Okay. Um, as you said, golf is like the high school has an open area. No, we went. We got to go off campus and go do a golfing. We we had a huge campus, so we played just like for the putting green kind of thing, you know, just with the little ball on the school. But then we got to go to the big golf course just once, just one time. And we had a big, big, big Olympic sized swimming pool. So we had a good. You guys have Olympic a Olympic-sized swimming pool. But you guys, don't you have a, isn't your pool big? Yeah, we have to go swim in the morning, third period, uh, 11 o'clock. We have to swim. I was heck of mad. It was heck of cold. cold. Yeah, and they, 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 they preheat the pool. Was it hot? Was it warm? No. Do you guys have sho get showers afterwards? Yeah. Yeah, we had that too. Yeah. Good follow-up questions. That's what you came in here to talk to. Well, besides school, what did you like to do? Let me think. Um, I was part of a singing. I, I like to sing, so I was part of this group called Up With People, and we would we would tour around like we sang at Disneyland, and we sang at oh like. Um, um, places where there were kids or hospitals or where else did we sing? I don't know. We sang a lot of different places. That was really fun. Um, I was really active in school. I became the, in my senior year, I was the girls league vice president. I was a treasurer for my class. I was, what else did I do? I did a I did a bunch of different things like that. I liked I liked oh I was in I was in we all had clubs the Tri High Y clubs so I was in a club. I was the president of that. Did you like to write? I love to write. I'm glad you asked that. I love to write. When I was. Um, in third grade, I had the best teacher, Mrs. Law, because she loved creative writing. And so she, there was a little group of us Wait, that... Wait, what was her first name? Her first name was Ellen, Ellen Law. Did I you know Mrs. Law? Who? Yeah, she's my third grade teacher. <gasps> You're kidding, your third grade teacher's name is Mrs. Law? Oh my God, that's a coincidence. And what, wow, and what, cool. that's wild. That was down in um, Ontario, so it was um, San Antonio, Elementary school. San Antonio Elementary. San Antonio Elementary School. And have so you I ever had teach that like Piedmont or any other elementary schools would be bitches? Or do you know anybody from that school? I don't. Um, what about Las Palmas and like Patterson or something? I know only because my son went to Payton. Payton? Oh. So I know some teachers like Miss Gill at Payton. You know her? No, I didn't go to Payton. I went to Payton. Um, all the elementary school. I went to three elementary schools: Las Palmas Elementary School and Patterson. I went to Piedmont and Oakland, and I moved to Alameda, and I went to Blue Bridges. Ah. Do you know um, Robbie Wilson? Robbie Wilson. Robbie Wilson. He works. It's a girl. She's, oh, Miss Robbie. Big, big Robbie, mm -hmm. big Robbie, yeah. Mm -hmm. I did drum circle with her oh. for many years. Yeah. She, did, she wears she glasses. 
Yeah. Yeah, I know Miss Robbie. She's, she's, she's nice. She, she leads uh, drumming. We did drumming. Before you moved to Alameda. Oh, oh, I know what else I liked in when follow up on your follow up. What else? I liked music. So in fourth grade, I started playing violin. So I played violin for six years. So I, I was in the, I was in the orchestra in middle school. Oh. Before, <laughs> before you moved to Alameda, um, where, I, mean, I didn't want to say like where where do you move? Oh, okay. Well, I moved a lot because I lived in Ontario till I was 18. Then I went to college in Santa Cruz. You guys all been to Santa Cruz, to the boardwalk? Yes, I have. You have? Yes. Have you? What? Have you been to Santa Cruz, to the boardwalk? I love that place. Have you? Yeah. Okay, so I went to school there. You did? At Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk? Mm-hmm. Beach Boardwalk. I, I, I went there for all four years, Dang, and I liked it so much, cool. I stayed one more year because I was, roller coasters. I was a teaching assistant, <laughs> and I did like the roller coaster. I do like that roller coaster. I like that, the, what is it, top, not Top Gun, what is it, um, one shot. Drop, drop zone or drop. something? Yeah, it's like drop zone. I forget what they called it. But anyway. Drop, drop, or something. Something like that, I forget. Um, anyway, I, so I moved to Santa Cruz. Then I went back down south to go to graduate school. Then I moved back up here. I lived in Berkeley. Then I lived in San Francisco for five years. Then I came to Alameda. So you were just traveling. I Do you was. know where Hunter's Point is? I'm making Hunter's a lot of Point noise here, aren't San I? San Francisco? I, well, I did travel a lot. Pardon? Did you know where Hunter's Point in San Francisco was? I do know where it is. Is it ghetto over there? I haven't really been to it very, like, extensively. Probably. Oh. Kind of. That's what friend, they say. My friend from there. From she was kind of what they kid. say. Have you been? I just heard of it. Um, you supposed to be recording. We supposed to be asking the question. That's in fine. Anybody can ask him. I don't mind. In the nineteen fifties, how was it? Wow, the nineteen fifties. Um, I know more of the sixties because you know I was born oh, yeah. in fifty three, so I was little. But I will tell you a couple things. One thing, in Southern California where I lived, the smog started being a bad problem. Smog? Smog. Do you know what smog is? Like bad pollution. Bad yeah. pollution. So when I was little, we, there's these mountains, right? If you look from our house, like about 15 minutes away, there's the San Bernardino Mountains, Mount Baldy. When I was little, you could see it all year round. When I started growing up, all summer, the air quality, the smog was so bad. You could not even see Mount Baldy. You didn't even know there was a mountain there. That's how bad that air was. And when we would go swimming Dang. afterwards, it would hurt our, to breathe and our, it would hurt our lungs. And I thought swimming made your lungs hurt. Like when it you was breathe the in, air. like. Yeah, like it would that. be like, ah, you know. It was the air quality, but people didn't realize back then how damaging it was. So we all had that. What was your question? What was I answering? Oh, and oh, um, in the 1950s. Oh, what was it like? And um, were you back? Where was it, were you alive when slavery was going on? Like not slavery, but when they used to treat black black people differently. Well, where I was, I didn't see any of that. Uh -huh. So I think they still do in the South in some places. It's still going on. It's not as well, I don't know. It depends. It's still going on. There's still Ku Klux Klan. What is the Ku Klux Klan? The Ku Klux Klan, those are people that, they're called white supremacists. There's white supremacists around here, too, but mostly they're in the South. They put on these white hoods, these pointed white hoods, so you can't see their face. And they go out and they find some, some person of color and... Um, They'll either, they'll like, sometimes they'll like 
burn a, um, a ring in their lawn, or sometimes they'll they'll hurt them or hang them. They'll do things. Oh, if that, anybody's trying to hang them, a lot. there's you know they're they're a very um, hateful group. They're a hateful group. So when I was growing up, I did not see, witness any of that, and in my family, we were very much for what we call civil rights. We wanted everybody to have that equal protection. Um, I like to say this, um, uh, which family member, or if the family member did, like who gave you your name? Ah, I think my mom. I have her middle name, Catherine Elizabeth. That's her middle name. And I think she liked the name Catherine. Back then, she said hardly anybody was named Kathy, but everybody seemed to like that name all at the same time. So there were a lot of Kathys in, in, always in my classes. Now you don't see very many, right? Not very many Kathys in your class, right? I think in all my students I see one. So it was a popular name then. You know, like there's certain names right now that are popular, like Jasmine or Jennifer. There's certain names that are popular. Or Kaya, Kayo, or mm -hmm. certain names. And my son's named Max. Back when we named him Max, nobody else was named Max. But now I see lots of Maxes in the school. How is it at ACLC? Ah, that's a good question. Well, my it's different than it used to be because we moved two different times, and we've gotten way bigger. When my son first went there in 2009, there were only 150 students. Is it bigger now? Now it's 375. Oh. It's way bigger. So it's way different. Back then, everybody could fit in the center all at once. Everybody knew each other, and now, for one thing, the middle schoolers, there's way more middle schoolers the school. than the high schoolers. And so it's out of balance, kind of. Same with the new one. Really? Yeah. It's did it, did it start one. small? Uh, yeah, it was, at first, well, as you know, the Mia in the Mia Elementary and the Mia High School middle was separate. Two separate campuses, yeah. right. But now it's all together and bigger. Right. Yeah. Did you right. know where? Which way did you like it better? Um, actually, this is my first year at Mia. But oh, it's nice okay. now. I heard about it last year at the other campus uh -huh. by Longfellow. I heard it. That was, it was okay. But it was, I heard it was like all rowdy. And oh. like this year is more civilized. And oh. More oh. Uh huh. So what made you decide to go to Oh, Nia? Nia. Um, uh, in my opinion, I didn't like Encinel, and my mom was going to force me to go there until I found another close high school. Uh -huh. and, yeah, it was the closest. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, it's funny. I went to a huge high school, and then I went to a small college, and I really liked the smaller better. Yeah, because you get to know people. Get to yeah. yeah. The big, I don't know, it just feels... Too anonymous, too, I don't know. I like the smaller, more more together. I like that. Did you like to read? Love to read. We, we always went to the library and checked out books. So now my mom became an English professor, so she read to us when we were little. Did your parents read to you when you were little? Think did so. yours? Yeah, mine did. My mom read a lot. She read all those, The Wizard of Oz and all these different Oz books. She read, did you ever read any of the, the Narnia books? Mm -hmm. yeah. With Aslan the Lion and all that. She read all those out loud to us. Did you ever read Charlotte's Web? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She read us that. Um, so she read us a lot. And I was a really... Uh, I loved reading. I would always go to the library, check out as many books as I could, read them all, then take them back. I loved reading. And I forgot to tell you, because 
when Mrs. Law, when I had Mrs. Law, she, I had her for third, fourth, and fifth grade. I still am friends with her. She's 95. I flew She's 95. down. I flew down for her 95th birthday. She's still totally going strong. She's amazing. I need to see Miss Law. She has. She is amazing. What does she work at? She doesn't work anymore because she's retired, but she used to teach down in, in Southern California. Uh, where? Um, gosh, I don't know. I'll, where San all the Antonio is in Southern California? It is, but it's no longer there. They, Wait, you went there? They turned it. In Southern California? No, she has her own different Mrs. Law. Oh. She has a Mrs. Law up here. Different one. Oh, I thought you went But Mrs. Law got us writing, and we wrote... There was four of us, Judy, Cindy, Dorothy, and me. We were like the school's poets. We wrote a lot of poetry and short stories. And then I decided, I started writing a story about a little girl from the Revolutionary War, you know, when our country was just starting, who gets separated from her mother. And so she searches for two years in the wilderness to try to find her mother. And my story turned out to be 140 pages long. So it was turned out to be like a little book. So she really got me writing. Um, um, I can ask another question. Okay. Um, in college, did you travel to a lot of colleges, or you just stayed at one? Oh, I stayed at one. That was my first choice. Was UC Santa Cruz, and I got in. And back then, they weren't accepting very many people, so it was this really lucky thing that I got in. I was so happy. I was really happy. So I stayed there, except for that one semester where I went on the ship. That was my junior year. We went on the ship, and so I went to all different kinds of ports then. So that was really fun. That was, that was yeah, that was pretty amazing. That was pretty amazing. Um, were you interested in shoes growing up? Shoes, like did I like cute shoes? Like expensive shoes. They didn't have all those, all those like, I remember when Nike first came into being, I was in college already. They didn't have them in high school. I think we wore things like... Um, Reeboks? No, they didn't have Reeboks yet. They had Keds. Ke and... Um, I'm trying to remember. Tennis shoes. What are the ones that you can wear if you wear a skirt? What are those tennis shoes Tom? called? What are they? Toms? No. What do they start with? I can't remember. But you can, they come in all different colors. Jellies? No. There are Converse? Yeah, Converse. They had those back then. They still had those. Um, so she That's what she was thinking of, Converse? Uh-huh. Oh. That's what I know kids will wear their, with skirts. I like to wear skirts a lot. You see me in jeans, usually I wear skirts. Right now, you wear skirts? Uh-huh, most of the time. I like skirts. Yeah, I do too. My mom got me into skirts. So, shoes, more, I was more like, like I, more like dressier shoes, more like shoes you would wear with skirts. Other than that, I guess, tennis shoes. When the lady asks you how did I do, can you tell her I did excellent? I'll think about it. I think you did. You all are doing great. Okay. And her. you're all doing great. Um. 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 When you were growing up, were you ever bullied or anything like that? I was lucky. I wasn't really bullied, although I would say I was kind of a bully to my little brothers, but not physically, more like verbally, more like I would say mean things to them, uh. especially my next brother. Um, but I, I do remember in third grade there was this boy, Chuck, that 
we that I was I bullied him. Some of us bullied him because he was. I don't know. I don't know. He was annoying. I guess. Do you ever regret bullying him? Totally. I feel bad. That poor kid. He was probably really unhappy, and we just it made it worse. Um, I totally regret it. Um. Have you ever gotten any fights or anything? One time, I had this best friend named Nancy, Nancy Bodner. She lived around the corner, and I was more of a quiet, you know, like do do the right thing kind of girl. You mm -hmm. know, I didn't get in trouble very much. But Nancy, oh my gosh, she was pretty. Um, she was kind of a tough girl and kind of like out there or taking risks and stuff. So when I, it just, if even in first grade, there was this boy named um, Gerald, Gerald Patrick. And one time we saw that he was copying off of my paper. And so Nancy says, let's beat him up after school. So we followed him. We started hitting him after school. And he started crying, and this lady came out of her house, and she made us stop. And I didn't, you know, I was six years old. I didn't really realize what we were doing. I realized it was wrong, but I felt bad about it. I felt like, you know, that was a mean thing to do. Did and mom I was, and dad find out after that? Nobody ever, because that lady didn't know us, so she'd never, no one ever told on us. But I regret it. I think about it now, and I think, oh, that was mean. I shouldn't have done that. That wasn't good at all. But no one ever knew, so I didn't ever get in trouble, just in my own mind. Have you ever broken any bones? Oh, my gosh, that's a good question. That's a good story. Okay. <laughs> when I was three and a half, well, my dad built this playhouse in our backyard. It was um, two stories high, like a play structure. Nobody back then had any play structures like you see now. Um, but it had, um, you went up this ladder, and so there's a whole, like, second floor. But it was all open. It had, um, it had just a little railing around it, but it had a, a rope you could swing on, I had a pole you could slide down, I had a chin-up bar in our backyard. So when I was just three and a half, I was climbing up it and I fell off and I broke my arm, I broke this arm. And I had to be in the hospital for a week because I'd been exposed to chicken pox. They put me in the isolation ward. So I wasn't was with the other kids. You were exposed to chicken pox when you, were, um, when you broke your bone? Before it. My little brother had it. So when they put me in the hospital, I couldn't be where all the other kids are all playing and stuff. No. I had to be in this isolation ward with all these babies in oxygen tents and stuff. I was terrible. Did it hurt? It was terrible. You look on? I don't remember it hurting. What I do remember is I remember that my back then, parents could only come to the hospital one hour a day. So the rest of the time, by myself, you know, just there and alone in the hospital. I'm three and a half. I'm just a little teeny little kid. So when my mom would leave, I would cry, and the nurses would yell at me, and they would tell me that so I was a big girl and I wasn't supposed to cry, and I was waking up the babies, and that really traumatized me. That that made me feel like. I was all alone and nobody to care about me. So after that, I would never cry in front of anybody. My whole, up until college, I, I, if I started to cry, I would leave the room. I would let nobody see me cry because of what those nurses said to me, because it affected me. So when I was in college, I had a friend named Charlene and she, one time something happened, and she came and she was crying, and I was like, oh, it's okay. And then after that, I asked her, it, could I please learn how to cry in front of you? And so she said, okay. And so I tried it out, and I practiced till I could cry in front of people. I wanted to be able to cry in front of people. 
which I now can. So that's my first broken bone. I have more broken bone stories. Though. Wait, wait, tell us. All right. But you have, do you have a follow-up on that, or is it a new topic? Whole new topic? I don't know. Ask the question. I'll see which one I'm going to answer. I'll come back to that. Okay, um, at ACLC, yes. how is it to be the school psychologist? Oh, I'm not. Mm. Mm. I teach something called creative expressions and creative writing. See, I love Mrs. Law teaching me how to write. I grew up and now I'm teaching writing. So I have 6th um, and 7th graders that I do storytelling with. And like I'll say, Okay, let's talk about injuries. Who had an injury? Tell your story. Or who, tell me, tell me, um, you know, we'll do, we'll do stories on different topics. Like just recently we did, that was nicely done, how you did that. Very um, gentle and nice. That was good. Um, we did stories, uh, just recently I asked them all if you had a superpower what superpower would you want to have? So what superpower would you want to have? Um, kind of like if I get injured, get revived. Oh, wow, one other person had that. Yeah, that you'd be revived. Okay, and what would you have? Oh, my God. You do this every single time. She's a thinker. She likes to think about it. What would you have? We'll let her think. I will have, um... To read people's minds, ah, to what they're thinking, to and mind. to be invisible. Ah, and invisible. What would you have? I would be a human torch. Ooh, human torch. Oh, wow. So I asked everybody in my class, I said, with your superpower, oh, and me, I would have the power to heal other people. That's the power I would say I'd like. So... And I the asked, smartest person in the I could find every cure. Oh, because you could read their mind. That's mm -hmm. true. That's a good power to have. So I asked everybody then, what would you do? What's one thing you would do for yourself? What's one thing you would do for the world? And you just said yours. You'd find a cure. So I'd go back in time. You'd go back in time. Ah. She could find a that's cure a good for cancer. And cancer and Ebola. Ebola. Ooh, and Ebola. Yeah, you could do a lot with that superpower. How can I find a gift for Ebola by reading somebody's mind? Well, yeah, you're right. If, if nobody knows it yet, but you might be able to take what everybody, all the different people's knowledge, put it together and find the answer. Maybe you could do that. Because nobody, maybe no one person knows, but maybe if you put it together. Okay. Should we come back to the broken bones? Mm hmm Okay. Broken bones. So have you broke any recent? Yes. Okay. I have three bicycle accidents oh. in 2008, because we're big bike riders. And I bicycle. When I was a kid, I rode my bike. But now, like, I rode my bike to Santa Cruz. And all the way to Santa Cruz? All the way to Santa like, Cruz. Just bike it. Well, actually, we started in Half Moon Bay. Half Moon Bay to Santa Cruz, 50 miles. Mm. 50 miles. And uh, my longest ride was 60 miles. Um, but we would ride up in the hills and, you know, do a lot of climbing. So, in 2008, I was riding my bike with Team Alameda. Have you heard of Team Alameda? Yes. Mm -hmm. Team Alameda is a bicycle riding club that meets on Saturdays and Sundays and sometimes other days. Today? No? Still does? It yeah, still does? Yeah, it was, um, remember Miss Sarah gave us flyers ah. about meeting them in San Francisco? Ah. Well, my husband used to be the ride leader captain of Team Alameda, and they do different level rides. So um, for people that are, you know, in good shape, They'll go riding up into the hills. For people who are, um, you know, not as good, they, they'll do rides around, like, to the San Leandro Marina or to the Point Richmond, different places. So I went on a, I was on a ride. It was, it was only my third ride. It had rained, so it was wet. 
and I was just was riding on this path to the San Leandro Marina, and the next thing, somebody said something behind me, and I turned, and the next thing I knew, bam, I was on my, um, down, and my show, actually, I was lying like this, because I had broken and dislocated this shoulder. And I was just lying there like this, and they said, can you get up? And I said, no. And he said, can you sit up? I said, no. They I can't move really it all serious. And so they had to get the paramedics. But the paramedics were so great. The paramedics were so great. Do you know what they did? What? He came up, because I was lying on the ground like this, you know, holding my arm because I couldn't, I couldn't move it because it was, my shoulder was out of its, out of its location. Do you know what the paramedic did? Did he pop it back to something? He didn't. It took three doctors to do that. They had to put, they had to take me in the ambulance. He put his head, here's my head over here like this. He put his head on the ground just like this, so he could talk to me, right, you know, the same where I was. It was so sweet, and they were so nice to me, and um, they took me in, uh, they, they had, <laughs> they gave, they gave me um, something to help me uh, with the pain, and then, um, oh, it was three months before it was really healed. It took a while, and then two years later, I fell and I sprained this one again. And then two years later, I fell and I broke this wrist and this collarbone. Okay. But they're healed now. Oh, you can you know see what? I'm healed. Yeah. What? That's all we're going to ask you for today. Wait, you have one idea. What is it? Is it a question or a? Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go is it is an idea? Go ahead. Um, God, you gave me words for a poem. Oh, I'm so glad, and that makes me really happy. If you write a poem, I want to see it. I love that. Uh, that's great. Okay, well, that's all we're going to ask you for today. Okay. Uh, nice meeting you.